Are we seeing double, my brothers and sisters? Are we seeing double? You know what I'm saying? Remember what the prophecy says? Reward them double. How they have what? Served us. How have they served us, my brothers and sisters? Mm. Scripture says reward them double. So we want to touch on the double and the double cross, right? So we're just looking up double on the on our hard drive and some of the available images right here. Let's bring up this one right here. Now, we just concluded a little brief um, reminder in the sense of, okay, here we have what? Here we have the double cross, right? The double cross is Imperial Majesty Ketamawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie the first, and the tree of life. The cross is the tree of life. Let's recognize that. We're not talking about um, the natural things. We're talking about the spiritual things. But even in the natural, you should be able to see. You understand that from what, from what is able to be seen, you should recognize what is not seen. Right? What is not seen. So the double cross. Was it a conspiracy of man? Or was it an act of God? The fact that church and state, church and state has been hit so dramatically in Ethiopia. This double, um, you know, people say double whammy, but that's, uh, you know, that's kind of trifling. This is serious, brothers and sisters. You know, that's why our prayers, Ethiopia and Ethiopians and, and all true Christian brothers and sisters and, and all creatures, we should pray for for all. You understand according to their order. You understand because this is this is very very serious. I was just showing this right here. Let me show you this as well, right? Um, this is this little pamphlet. You know these old Christian pamphlets right here. But something more interesting. If you're the Spirit of God in Christ, then you can understand it. You not just understand or get caught up on, you know, some of the the, the natural the humanness. You know, you recognize the real message in it. Who am I that a king would die in my place? Now, we've been touching on this um, subject matter of the conspiracy against his majesty based on his majesty's own, um, based on the teaching of his imperial majesty, right? Based on his own, his own teaching. When his majesty says to us in May, uh, um, um, May uh, 5th, 1941, he warns us of the godless and cruel dragon, which had newly risen its head. People think he's talking about Nazi Germany or something like that. You know, that's what folks think. No, it's much deeper than that. The same warning that he gave to us as Rastafari, never to make a mistake in pretending or assuming that man is emanated from a deity. You know what I'm But what does emanation mean, my brothers and sisters? Uh, a, bro a brother in, I think it's in our brother Kashu. Wendem Kashu and others also have asked, but most recently asked about the chakras and about the you know the whole thing with the chakras, the tree of life, and you know um, that's a very important subject matter too. But this is kind of like a, a, a prerequisite in a sense to that. This is kind of like a basic. We need to understand well what is the cross? What is the cross? Let me take this. Okay, yeah. What is the cross? Well. The cross is a tree, right? They said that Christ was crucified on a tree, right? That's what they said, that, that, that Christ was crucified on a tree. But then we also have the tree of life. If you notice, um, in fact, uh, let's, let, let's bring up, let's bring up, uh, I wanted to show you this one right here. It might not make um, sense really at first, but I want to just introduce this into it, all right? Now, one will say, well, what's this right here? Well, this is the double car, right? The double car, right? We're talking about um, the double cross, right? So this is the double car right here, right? The double car, all right? That symbol. This is, um, according to the cipher, the Ethiopic fidel, that will be ha. And you might know something about the bull, the horns of the bull is also symbolically ha. But then if we take it to a heavenly level, we're speaking about Nibiru, you know what I'm saying? Nibiru, the, the, the crosser, the one that crosses, or the uh, Sementenyao Shi Kokep, right, the star of the eighth millennium. And then Ethiopic time coming up, 
is uh, 7505. I think we're in 7504. Mm-hmm. 7,504 years, you know, according to the true calculation of time in this age or this dispensation. Mm-hmm. So the car, the double car rate right there. Now, something we was looking up before, let's just uh, point to this right here. We was on the subject matter of... Um, on the subject matter of evidence, right? And we had got to this verse in uh, Eremias, um Jeremiah 32 and 17, where it says, Ah, Adonai Yahweh, right? Lord God, Adonai. You see that right there? And then they mistranslate um, Yahweh as uh, Jehovah or Jehovah. That's the Ashkenazis there. You understand? But, you know, may made the faithful among them, Jah have mercy on the Torah Jews. With the Rothschild Jews, they are antithesis and enemies of His Imperial Majesty and are majority behind what's going on. You understand, you know, what's going on down here in the seclorum, right? It says, Behold, thou hast made, speaking of our Lord God, right? Or Adonai Yahweh, speaking of Yeshua, speaking of Jesus Christo, speaking of Christ, the Moshiach, the Bain Ha Elohim Hayim. Speaking of the Son of the Living God, right? Remember, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old revealed, right? Behold, look and see, here it is. Arai, the vision. In that whole, behold, here he is. Thou hast made, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, right? By thy great power and stretched out arm, there is nothing too hard for thee. Now, we actually we did, did a little search here, and we looked up thine enemy from Proverbs, from Proverbs 24 and 17. We want to remind the Ethiopian at home and abroad, um, we should rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. It's just if your so-called enemy is a political enemy and the leader of your nation, if he stumbles, then your whole nation stumbles. You know, so there's nothing to rejoice about. You understand? Know it says that if thy enemy be hungry and you give him bread to eat, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. You understand? Know this is the teaching of the true Christian. You understand? Know the true Christian. The Christian of, of the spirit and the truth of Gitachin Namet Hanatachin Jesus Christos. Now, what we wanted to touch on was the stretched out arm and the double cross. Well, these are, these are two kind of uh, related Related points right here, the stretch out arm, nata. It says nata right there, right? So let's uh, um, actually um, put this in the search right here, right? And um, put this right here, stretched out arm. And then let's bring up uh, an abstract, right? Bring, let's bring up an abstract, you understand? Or the, the artwork really is part of that, that, that abstract, right? That abstract, let's see if we have it. Right here, let's move this down. So this is some of the, the okay. Here we go. Right here. All right. This is a double car. All right. Let's move this over right here. All right. Let's move this over right here. Let's move this over right here. Now these are not images to bow down and worship. Let me just say that because there's some foolish um, people out there that think that because we're showing some images or using these teaching images, we are, you know, um, saying that one should pr practice dulia, you understand, not lateria, but dulia, these are different theological concepts of worship, dulia is actually a form of slavery, if you, if you understand, so there's a slavery to images, and it seems like there's a slavery to the false images, you understand, the true images, the spirit of truth is going to show you that, and people who don't want the truth will prefer to bow down to the false images. But people who have the true images, we recognize it's not to bow down to. Because it's, it's an image, it's a teaching tool. You know what I'm saying? It's a teaching tool. Like somebody says, which way we go? And I draw on the ground with my hand. You know what I'm saying? You might bow down to look at it, but you're not going to worship. I draw on a piece of paper. You're not going to bow down and say, this is God. You understand? No. It, it is a direction. You understand? It's a, it's, a, it's a teaching tool. And even in the Bible, if we look in the Bible, um, in the uh, first century of Christina, of Christianity, these teaching tools 
were you? So when Paul and Galatians say about Christ evidently crucified before you, if you look up uh, what evidently mean, it shows that it was a picture, that they had a picture, like the triplicates, you know, they had a picture, you understand, a diagram, that they had drawings then. In fact, when Christ was transfigured on the Mount Tabor, it's interesting that the disciples recognized and they knew, you understand, they knew Moses and they knew Elijah. How would they know Moses and Elijah? You understand? Just like we have pictures of relatives, right? And I say, this isn't so-and-so, this is my so-and-so. And you say, oh, I just saw them uh, 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 just, just a couple minutes ago. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah they're down here. They, they came to visit me, blah, 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 right? In, in other words, you, you recognize who it is speaking of. It doesn't mean we have pictures of my relatives that I am worshiping my relatives. Though some people might worship their relatives in that sense. They might bow down and get into some um, a demonic activity, thinking they're talking to their relatives, but they're talking to demons. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just making that point about the use of images, because there's some foolish arguments that people want to um, bait us with debate, you know what I'm saying, in order to feel us out before battle. You understand? No, let them come as they are. You understand? Or be still and know that I am God. You understand? That's the word right there. You understand that God is in I and I. That greater is he who is in I and I than he who is in the world. So here we have the double cross. Right? This double cross. This is kind of interesting here, isn't it? Right? And his majesty with the raised up arm. Right? It's saluting. Right? Now, we also have the stretched out arms right here. Right? The stretched out arms. And then from the mysteries of ancient Egypt, which Moses, our great lawgiver, was learned in, see Acts of the Apostles 7.22, you understand? We have the Ka right here. And the Ka is the double, some say the soul double. Now, what I see in this right here from a Christological perspective is what it says in, um, was the first Corinthians, that, um, that the head of the man is Christ. Right? The head of the man is Christ. But now from the word, what we see right here, if we will come to the word, let's bring this up, come to the word right here. These are some of the stretched out, the stretched out verse. And in fact, let us um, be a little more specific in now our search. Let us put stretched out arm, right? Let us put stretched out arm, right? So we're down to 18 matches before we had uh, a larger number right there. So the first verse is 6 and 6, right? Right? The first verse is 6 and 6, for stretched out arm. It says, Wherefore say to the children of Israel, the Bani Israel, I am, or I, Yahweh, will bring you out. I, in other words, the, the one who is the eyes, he who is who he is, the living one, right? I, the living God, right? The God of Abraham, Yisahak, and Yaakov, the triune God, the one God, will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, right? And will rid you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Now, some say, well, there was no slavery. Well, the word doesn't say really slavery. Because when you think of slavery, you're thinking about what happened to our descendants because the curse is for disobedience in the latter days and Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 15 to verse 68 enumerates those curses. Now in this Torah portion in Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 26 it says, see, look, behold, you understand? I have put before you this day blessings and curses. Choose you. We are to choose. Now, the Word plays a very, very important role, both the Word in spirit, which is Yeshua HaMoshiach, and the Word in truth. What Word do we speak in truth? You understand? Are we speaking the divine words with true faith, powered by the Amen, or are we just speaking the words that everybody else is speaking? Are we using word, sound, and power at its higher to Wahido manifestation and producing the Imare, the demonstration? Or are we producing a negative demonstration by cursing ourselves? You know, when we say these negative sort of things and these sort of negative sort of words to each other, you understand, foul words, foul speech, or even negative things, and things like, you know, um, like you know, somebody says, I can't believe, you know what I mean? You know, I can't moment. You know, or seeing is believing. You know, these nonsenses, things that are, see, that's a different religion, that's a different cult, that's a different, that's a mind control. People don't want to recognize how 
mind control, you know what I'm saying, is real. You know what I'm saying? But really, in Christ, it's not about mind control. It's about the peace of mind. So that's why we don't give up our peace of mind to get into an argument or debate or any other kind of nonsense because he brings us out from such things. Now, in the context of this scripture right here, we have to recognize that those who had um, put bondage on the Egyptians were actually Egyptianized Assyrians. And that might shock some people, right? But you see in the prophet in Isaiah, he talks about that was the Egyptians. You know what I'm saying? That my people went to sojourn there, but the Egyptians, I mean, was the, excuse me, Assyrians. You know what I'm saying? The Assyrians. You know what I'm saying? Who had um, put God's people in bondage. Now, let's, let's just go there right now. It was the Assyrians. Right, it was a Syrian because I want to show you the proof here, and you can pray on it, you can meditate on it. Right, um, who put my people? Right, put my people right there. Uh huh. And let's go search this out right there. My people. There's two matches. A Syrian. My people. Both in Isaiah. Right. Isaiah. Um, we'll bring this. Yeah, bring it up. Uh, Ten and twenty-four. It says thus. It says therefore thus saith. The Adonai Yahweh of hosts of Teba, the Tebaot, or Adonai Yahweh Tebaot. Now that is father and son, or son, Adonai, Adoni, Yeshua, Geta, Lord, right? And that is the father. That is the God, the Yahweh of hosts. Or in this revelation, the Siyume Egeziavia Kedamawi Chayla Shalase, the first power of the Trinity, Father. Notice it says, Taba is a mass of persons, a mass of things, regularly organized for war, an army, by implication, literally or figuratively, a campaign. Specifically, hardship, and then in its latter sense, worship, because they worship, the people began to worship, you know, the pagan interpretations of the astrology. You understand of the star word, you know, the false interpretation of what these things mean. When they see Leo, they say Leo instead of recognizing Yehuda or Judah. You know what I'm saying? It says, oh, my people, right? Oh, my people, which is the Am or Ami as the Amhara, right? My people, a people, a congregated what unit? A congregated unit, specifically a tribe, as those of Israel. Right, hence collectively troops or attendants, troops or attendants figuratively in the figurative sense or the mythological or metaphorical or parabolic sense, a flock. Now it's usually translated as folk, men, nation, or people. Oh my people, army that dwellest, right? That dwellest, right? That Yashab, Yashab, like Yeshiva, that dwellest, right? In Sion. And Sion, as a permanent capital, it was a mountain of Jerusalem. But we have to recognize that Sion is the castle of David, is the root you know, of the monarchy. You understand? It's the root of the true monarchy. It's the household of the king of kings and his Christ. Be not afraid of the Assyrian. See a lot of stuff in the news about Assyrian and the Assyri Syrians right today. He shall smite thee with a rod. He shall smite you with a shebet, a skion, a stick. Punishing, writing, fighting, ruling, walking, or figuratively a clan, figuratively a particular type of people as Ethiopia has been smitten, you understand, by this kind of like Islamo Mohammedan thing, even though Ethiopia opened up its doors and received the original Sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, into Ethiopia. You know, but that's a different kind because Muhammad himself said in the last days of this world age that there will be 73 different um, sects of my people and 72 of them will go to the Gehanama, the Gehanama Isad or Jahana, right? The, you know, will go to the hellfire, all right? So this Assyrian matches up, doesn't it? And shall lift his staff, his staff, his mata or his branch, his tribe, his people, his religion, you understand? Also a rod, whether for chastising, figuratively for correction, or ruling in the sense of a scepter, or in the sense of throwing as a lance, or walking a staff, figuratively, it's a support of life, and that refers to bread. 
You understand that, that that staff, like the staff of bread. So when we look at the word staff, we have to recognize the true biblical contextuality of it in order to come to a right understanding, a true understanding. That's why we go to the roots. Those who say it's not about getting into the etymology, where that's foolish. You know what I'm saying? Against thee, after the manner, after the manner or the derek, the derek, you wonder why blacks like the name Derek. Derek means a manner. Derek is a road. That's a derek, like the way, the way, the truth, the life, the derek, right? As something that's trodden, or we say yarden or trodden, as I and I trod, the derek, right? The way that the Egyptians trod, figuratively, it's a course of life. It's a particular mode of action. We say akahed on a certain level, right? Often ad, ad, adverbially. Now, Egypt here is mitraim, mitraim, which is upper and lower Egypt, or Egypt more towards Sudan and Ethiopia and the upper, the highlands where the ancient um, uh, mythological, some would say, gods came from, or the Ha Elohim, the Hashem, the Neteru came from, right? So another interpretation of this is, so here is what the sovereign master, the Lord, who commands armies. Now what armies are we talking about? We're talking about spiritual armies. We're even talking about angels, right? The angels that fight against these demons. You understand? The angels of the king of kings and his Christ. They were speaking real talk here. It says, my people who live in Sion, do not be afraid of Assyria. Don't be afraid of these tidings right now with the double, the double cross, the double hit in Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? Against church and state. Don't be afraid of this. Even though they beat you with a club and lift their, their kudro, their kudro, against you as Egypt did. Now, we know that the Masonic, uh, whole Eurocentric and the whole Masonic thing is heavily Egyptianized. They're using the Egyptian mechanics. Yes, and in a very um, um, evil way, not the way of ancient Egypt. So when we look at these images, there's a lot of confusion because people are looking at the way, you know, um, the Gentile, white Western world misinterpretation of it. And we can see they're updating it every time they find a new art and fact. You understand? But many of our teachers who have been teaching this, you understand, have been right and exact. All right, so Isaiah 52 and 4 says this right here. For thus saith the Lord God, once again, this is Adonai, Yahweh, right, or Bamarinya, Geta, Egeziavi here. It's speaking of Geta, right? It's speaking of, of, of the Son and the Father, you understand? Or the pre incarnate Yeshua. The pre incarnate Yeshua. Some say this is the Melchizedek. You understand? The pre incarnate Yeshua, like Abraham, um, 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 Shalus Kedus be, be Ab, Abraham Beit, when the Trinity, right, visited Abraham, right, and two of them went forth, and the one that remained was, well, first like an angel, but then this Melach was the Lord. So Abraham was speaking to this, the one that was left behind, but he was the master, he was the Lord. So he was speaking to the Lord. Remember the scriptures and even the Quran and the, and the Metzhaf Kedus, the Bible, all agree on one, on some particular truth. And we have to see where there's agreement and see where the agitators have agitated and the false doctrines have come in and, and, and weed one from the other. You know, because we don't like what the Mohammedans have done or are doing, but we have to recognize there was some wisdom, you know, saying, in that Hajj or Hijra, you know, saying, in the fact that a Judeo Christian, you know, saying, um, king, even a king of kings of Ethiopia, allowed the Ishmaelites, the original true followers, and we we have to speak this racially because they were black Muslims. You understand? I mean, the Sudanese connection with the Ahl al-Bayit is very, very powerful. You understand? Dr. York, Imam Isa, he, he went into it in a lot of details, and his books, I think, are really, really valuable on the Islamic darajah, on the Islamic level, to really helping us figure out who's who on the face of the planet Earth. In fact, there's a, actually a book called Who's Who on the Face of the Planet Earth. Now, I don't know if I can find it and hallelujah, I've been able to find it. It's this particular book if you can find it out there. Right? And some of them have it out there and you can see it's kind of beat up and worn out, right? This is Who's Who on the Face of the Planet Earth. Right? Who's who on the face of the planet Earth? 
Uh, this is a very, very good book from the um, uh, Ansaru La right, community, you understand, on Dr. York, you know, right, community right there. It's an older book, you understand, but on the Islamic level, he knows his stuff. You understand, on the Ethiopia, Halas Selassie level, that's I-9 territory. You understand, so as we learn from him about these things, you understand, he needs to learn from those of us and his people, from us who know our things. You understand, we have to remember what the true will, this is Abraham's family, the black Muslims, the, the, um, the, 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 the Mohammedan, when we say Mohammedan, you understand that we're, we're not talking about our people, we're talking about our people who have been, you know, been hoodwinked and bamboozled like a lot of black Christians also have and certain Ethiopians as well. So we see right here with the families of the Ansars in the West, you understand, and, and, and see right here, see right here, um, this is the 72 sects, this, this area right here talk about the 72, the 72 sects right here, and the 73rd is said to be the Ansar law, right, and we're talking about the faithful among the Sudanese, but the Sudanese are in a, they're in a situation right now, and you can see right here where it's talking about the, um, you know, like Gaddafi, you know, Gaddafi was part of that um, Jabariya, the Jabariya right here, and we can see the Qadariya or the Qadarida, the Qadariya, we have the uh, the Jahimiya, you know what I'm saying, these are different sects, the Rafizia, you understand, the different sects of them. So when we talk about these 73 sects right here, ones might not really fully um, overstand, and let's see if he has this right here where Mohammed and one of the hadiths basically said that in the latter days and time there will be 73 different sects, right? And that 72 uh, of them will go to hell, right? And part of the reason why is because they will fight against Holy Ethiopia, right? They're going to fight against Holy Ethiopia. And when you look at the world view right now, there's really not much, they don't seem, they want to debate, they want to fast for, 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 for strife and everything like that. So, you know, there might not be too much that can be really done besides holding the faith, you understand, in spirit and in truth and fighting the good fight, you understand, of the King of Kings and his Christ, the spiritual warfare, you understand, and temporal as necessary. All right, so this book right here, if you can get a copy of this particular book, it's really, really, it, it can help out, right? So anyway, let's continue with this right here. We'll touch on this a little bit. More. I don't know if anyone from their community has might have scanned it or might have put it on, scribed or it might be out there somewhere. You understand that if you get get to find it, then 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 good. You know, then we'll even put up on I and I page as well as a free download, right? So the Syrian right oppress them without. Oh, let's get to this verse right. Verse um, this is this is 52, 52 and four of Yeshayahu or Esaias, right, um, Isaiah, the prophet. It says, For thus saith the Lord God, my people, Ami, once again, the Ami, as if Amhara, Amhara, the free people, you know, from the people of that Davidic covenant. You know what I'm saying? But, see, the modern Amhara, in a sense, are almost like your first century Jews. If you, if you understand the relation to Christ and therefore the relation to His Majesty. Mm -hmm. Because they're of that covenant, so Jah has given them already an example. You understand? An example as well, right? So, check this out. This is basically just to answer the question. People say, well, um, you're talking about the Egyptian, the Egyptian, Egyptians, and, and, you know, some of our Afrocentric and panhandling Africanists. Right, they 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 kind of get a, a a misinterpretation. They 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 hate on his Majesty. They don't really see his Majesty as the real Pan African Haru or hero or Horus in that sense. You understand that the chosen one. You understand that his way. If we followed his way, we would, we would already overcome. We would be living in this millennial age right now if we had our ancestors had been obedient. But still, we have that opportunity even 40 years later in spirit and in truth. So my people went down a fourth time into Egypt, right? This is, thus saith the Lord God, right? Adonai Yahweh or Gietai Egeziyavi or Lotu Sivhat, to him be the praise. He says, my people, Ami, went down a fourth time into Mitzrayim, 
to sojourn there, to dwell there, to sit there, in other words, right? And the what? Assyrian oppressed, or as we as Rastafari say, downpressed them without cause. This is interesting. Because this is the prophetic book. You know, the, the prophets came to clarify a lot of things that were misunderstood previously. You understand? And so many thought, oh, it was the Egyptians, like people say today, it was the Egyptian. But this prophetic book says that the people went down into Egypt, but the Assyrian, the Assyrian are the ones who downpressed them without a cause. Isn't this interesting? That it was the Assyrian. So when did the Assyrian and the Egyptian, and if you study history, you'll find that time and you'll be able to recognize what time was the Exodus. You know what I'm saying? When did the Exodus really happen? You understand? You'll be able to line up a lot of a lot of things, and that would basically show you the right timing of it. So we want to just go here, 52 and 4. Let's make a note of this right here, 52 and, and 4, that it was the Assyrian, right? It was the Assyrian, right? The Assyrian that downpressed, right? That downpressed. Um, Jah's people, right? Jah's people, where? In Egypt. So that's Isaiah 52, verse 4, right? Just so you can have it. And then to the CF or confer, you can compare that with Isaiah 10, right? Isaiah 10 and 24, all right? That's a little bit, uh, I'm not going to say off subject, but in a sense, um, it might be a little bit off the subject, but it's necessary that we get that clear. You know what I'm saying? If we don't get that clear, then as we move forward, a lot of people will have some strange ideas. You know what I'm saying? Therefore, they, they'll be looking at the word, but blindly. It's like they will hear the message of the kingdom, but they will not comprehend it. They will not understand what they are hearing. And then the evil one, Satan, the Kufu, the Kufunya, you know what I'm saying, can snatch out of their heart that which was sown. So the double cross, now this is like also on the subject matter of the double cross, all right? And we want to continue on this particular subject matter. And um, what we might do actually is to take a brief break, not a break, I need mean words, right? Take a, take a pause, right, for the cause, right, and continue on this issue of the double cross. What is the meaning of the cross? What is the meaning of the double cross because it's very important for us to understand that we're not talking about an idol you understand it's idol when you're ignorant you, you're, you're idol you understand you're idol because you don't recognize the way the truth and the life 